Come on, can you put your hands together for the Lord one more time today? Come on, let's celebrate what he's done today. 85 people in this service went down in the waters of baptism, raised to newness of life. Wow. I don't know about you, but I stand in awe of God's faithfulness. I'm not going to lie, there's a lot of times I just, okay, let me tell you. Today, in between services, I was up about to get ready to change for baptism for the second service, and I was in the offices, which if you don't know, overlooks the lobby and the parking lot. And I just, I just was thanking the Lord. As people were, were walking into the doors of the church, people coming in with, with clothes for baptism, y'all, God's been good. He never fails. I don't know if you know that or not. God's been good to you. God's been good to me. No matter what you're walking through today, there was 150-ish people that went down in the waters of baptism. The old nature the Bible talks about is buried in the waters of baptism. They were raised to newness of life. Let's go make the most of it, family. Let's go live for Jesus with everything that we have. Let's go make a dent in this world, make his name famous. And it's one of the things I love about this house is that you walk into the doors of your church and you're hungry. You're hungry to worship him. You're hungry for the word. But even more than that, we don't keep it inside these four walls because it's our job to take what we have and take it to the streets. It's our job to take what he's done for us and share it with everybody so that people that are far from him can come to know who Jesus is just like you have and just like I have. And we're gonna dive into the word of God today knowing that it is Freedom Sunday in so many different ways. People found freedom through the waters of baptism, freedom life groups, sign up, start today. So it's it's just a celebration of what God is doing. And in, in that vein, I thought that my message should be directed towards you and I finding freedom and what that looks like. So we're going we're gonna to walk through that today. And to start our time together, we're going to start in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And it says this, for though we live in the world, we don't wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world on the contrary, like I, when I say the word contrary, I feel like I need to use an English accent. It just goes better, right? Like I did it in first service and it was so bad, I'm not gonna do it in this service. It was awful. <laughs> On the contrary, they have the divine power to demolish strongholds. The things and the weapons that we fight with as followers of Jesus have the power to demolish strongholds. I don't know about you, but I need some weapons that can demolish some strongholds in my life. I need to make sure we're fighting with the right things so that we can demolish the things that are holding us captive. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. As we start our time together today, I want you to put your imagination cap on. I need you to go with me for a second. So if you're tuned out, the Cowboys haven't started yet. Don't worry, they were last night. That was last night. They're not on. So use your imagination with me and pretend that they're gonna be good this year. I'm just kidding, that's a joke. That's a joke for all my Cowboys. Imagine with me, if you will, a maximum security prison where thousands of prisoners are being held. I don't know what the first image that comes to your mind is. Maybe it's a massive barbed wire fence that surrounds the perimeter of the building. Maybe it's a watchtower with an armed guard looking over the yard of the prison area. Maybe it's the sound of a prison door slamming as the, the two pieces of metal collide. Again, I don't know what your first impression is, but I want you to start picturing what this might look like. 
Maybe it's the hand of an inmate pressed against the glass, and on the other side is the hand of a spouse or a family member as they communicate through the glass of this maximum security prison. Now picture with me the very same prison, the very same inmates, the very same barbed wire surrounding the perimeter, the very same watch guard in the tower overlooking the yard, the very same prison door slamming, the very same inmate with his or her hand pressed against the glass communicating with a loved one. But there's one difference. There's one difference between the two prisons and the two pictures here. In the second one, the only difference is the second one, the second maximum security prison has no locks on any of the doors. The doors are shut, giving the appearance of being locked, but in reality, the prisoners are just one step away from freedom. The Apostle Paul wrote that the weapons that we fight with, they're not of this world. We don't use grenades, spiritually speaking, fighting. We don't use guns, spiritually speaking, when we're fighting, but on the contrary, The weapons that we use have divine power to demolish strongholds. In other words, knowing that it's Freedom Sunday, here's kind of what I felt in my spirit for this week for all of us. That since the weapons that we fight with have the power to demolish strongholds, we might as well go ahead and deem today this Freedom Sunday Demo Day. We're going to go ahead and demolish... All of the strongholds that seem to hold you captive, strongholds that you don't even know you have in your life. I'm preaching about strongholds, and some of you are elbowing the person next to you like, man, this message is for you. (laughs) And that's okay too, sir, that's okay too. Ma'am, this message is for you because you need help with judgment. (laughs) Because the truth of the matter is we all have things in our lives that we think are holding us captive. We have these areas that that we feel like have this hold on us, this grip on us, and they won't let us go. It's demo day. It's demo day. In the original language, the Greek word used for stronghold, this is so powerful, and I want you to get a, a picture of this. It's very similar with the story that we opened up with, but it actually means and it describes someone who is chained, but the chain isn't isn't strong enough to actually hold them down. This is what the the word stronghold in this passage means. It's an area of your life that actually doesn't have as much power as you think it does. See, some of us are dealing with strongholds in our life that you've been giving so much power to it, and it doesn't possess the power that you've been putting into it. You've been frustrated by it, and you've made it bigger and bigger and bigger. But the thing oftentimes that we deal with, according to Scripture, it may have you chained, but it doesn't have the power to hold you there. Come on, I don't know about you, but that fires me up to know that the weapons that we have and some of the things that we deal with, because here's the good news. That even if you are bound by a stronghold in your life, the scriptures just told us that you don't have to stay captive to it. A lot of times, not every time, I understand, but a lot of times, it's up to you and it's up to me if we're going to let this thing hold us captive. Sometimes you and I are living in a prison. Watch, not because you've been sentenced there, but because you chose to live there. And you've lived there so long that when the door closes, you think the door's locked. You see everything around you, and it seems like it's got a stronghold on your life, and you've gotten tired of fighting back. 
You've gotten so tired that you just lay on your bed, wait for your breakfast every single morning. And I feel a nudge of the Holy Spirit today saying, listen, there are some things that you think have a stronghold on your life, but if you will be willing to fight one more time, just walk up to the door and see if it can hold you captive. Do you have a little bit more fight in you because there's some things that you're dealing with that you've given more power to than what they deserve? And I have a feeling that many of you are just one step away from the freedom you've been looking for. Maybe it's an addiction or a habit or a wound, something passed down from generation to generation. This is what Paul's talking about here, a, a stronghold. But then he continues, he says, listen, what do, we, what do we do if we have these strongholds in our lives? We demolish arguments. And every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. So what he's saying is it's not true, but the enemy has just convinced you that it's true. And so a lot of these strongholds in our world, the devil, it's a place where the devil is pretending to have power that he doesn't have. So we demolish these arguments, we demolish these lies, these pretensions that set themselves up against what God has said about you, the knowledge of God. Not what your past says about you, not what your family says about you, but what God says about you. And we take captive every thought. See, you've been held captive and you and I are supposed to take captive the very thing that has been holding you captive. The thoughts and the lies that the enemy has held you with are the very things that we're instructed to say, hey, you got to get a hold on the lies of the enemy that he has planted in your mind. It's time that we take captive the things and the thoughts that he's planted there. In other words, we got to break the lie. You got to have demo days in your life spiritually to break off the things and tear down the things that you think have a hold of your spirit. So what, what, what is a stronghold, or what does this look like? Let's, let's continue with our prison analogy. It's a prisoner locked, but oftentimes locked by deception. And you're living a life by something that's not true. Let me, let me say it this way. A stronghold can be anything that exalts itself in your mind, pretending to be bigger or more powerful than the God that you serve. And I've got good news for you on a Sunday morning. I've got good news for those that are watching online today who feel like you have been held captive by a stronghold in your life. You feel like you've been living in a prison, but it's been giving the appearance of holding you captive. And you need to know That though you're tired, though you're exhausted, though you don't feel like continuing on, that today is not the day to quit. Today is not the day to give up. Today is the day to see if the door will open. And I have a feeling that when we take captive those thoughts, the lies of the enemy, that you're going to see it's easier to get out of what you've walked into than you've imagined it to be. I think for some of you, Maybe, maybe, just maybe, you're one step away from freedom. We're demolishing strongholds in our lives. We believe the lies of your spiritual enemy. And can I tell you, when you believe the lie, you empower the liar. When you believe the lies that he's feeding you, unintentionally, you give him more power in your life. You've given him a foothold. You've given him an open door, and he's got his foot in the door. And when you try to slam it, it won't close. And you're wondering why you keep recycling the same stuff time and time and time again. It's because sometimes you're believing the lie of the enemy, and we've yet to take it captive, and we've empowered the liar by doing so. So if you're wondering if you have a stronghold in your life, let me, let me show you some symptoms of a stronghold. Do you have something in your life that continually steals your focus? It's just all you think about. Things that aren't healthy, 
things that are tearing you down. You try to work, you try to focus, you try to spend time with your family, but your mind goes there. A potential stronghold. Be on the lookout. If that's you, be on the lookout. Hey, is this an area in my life that could have a, a false sense of hold on my life that I've been giving more power to? Let's look at the next one. Symptoms of a potential stronghold, something that causes you to feel controlled. Habits, addictions. A third one, something that consumes your emotional energy. You're always a mess every time you think about this. You have no hope, no joy. It drains you. It's not life-giving, but it's life-taking and you have feelings of hopelessness. Symptoms of a stronghold. And here's the, here, here's the good news though. The bad news is you have a spiritual enemy whose desire is to watch your life crumble before your very feet. That's not, I'm sorry, that's, that's not good news, but it does get better. The better news is, is that you have a heavenly father who is on your side. And last time I checked, Last time I checked, the first book of John says, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. So the one that lives on the inside of you is greater than your spiritual enemy that is trying to hold you back and take your mind captive and get you to believe the lies that he would have you to believe. Greater is he who is in me than the enemy that's lying to me. And let's take it a step further. Let's talk about your weapons today. We don't use guns and grenades, spiritually speaking, when we're fighting these battles. But the spiritual enemy that is very real, that wants to watch your life crumble and fall at your very feet. Here's the good news I have for you today, is that that spiritual enemy has to answer to a higher authority. He's not the supreme being. He wants, he wants to convince people that he's got more power than he does. I wonder if there's anybody in the house that knows the name that, that your spiritual enemy has to submit to. Somebody said it, what was it? Jesus. Somebody said it, what's the name? Jesus. What's the name? Jesus. Come on, I wonder if a whole church in Austin, Texas can shout the name of Jesus, the name that your spiritual enemy Come on, let me hear you say the name. One, two, three. Jesus. So when you're, sorry, I baptized a bunch of people. I'm fired up today. Yo, I started sweating before I even got out here. The name of Jesus. You know how you fight your spiritual enemy in the things that appear to have you bound? You call on the name of Jesus. Let me go old school. When's the last time you invoked the name of Jesus over your family, over your job, over your marriage? When, when is the last time that you used the name of Jesus and it wasn't in a profoundity way? You have the name that is above every name at your disposal. The name of Jesus. There is no name that is greater. There is no name that is higher. Guess what? At the mention of his name, demons have to flee. Your spiritual enemy has to submit to a higher authority. So not only, not only do you have the name of Jesus at your disposal, but let me even, let me take it back a little more old school. You got the blood of Jesus at your disposal. I don't know if you remember in your life I don't know if you remember back the pages of scripture, but your savior went to a cross for you. He died for your sins. And the enemy, the same spiritual enemy that likes to try to hold you captive thought that he had Jesus right where he wanted him. Oh yeah, he's on a cross. People mocking him. He's bleeding out with the crown of thorns on his head lashes on his back, a spear pierced through his side. That's exactly where I want Jesus, king of the Jews. 
plot twist, Satan. Jesus always has the last laugh. And the blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary is at every believer's disposal. Can I tell you the word says that by his stripes you were healed. When's the last time you stood on that? All right. Since we're kicking it old school, when's the last time you pleaded the blood over your family? When's the last time you walked into your home and said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke any enemy that would try to take over my children, any enemy that would try to make its move into my family and my marriage? So you got the name of Jesus. He got the blood of Jesus. And one more I want to share with you today. This is how we fight. This is how we fight. And I'm grateful because if I try to fight my battles in my own strength, I end up on my back, knocked out. Don't try to fight in your own strength. Try to fight with the name, with the blood, and with the word. Come on, can I talk to you today? I know I got some old school saints in the house. I know I got some, I got some people in the house who's new to faith and you're like, who's this crazy preacher? <laughs> but can I tell you, the name worked for my grandparents and it worked for my parents. It's gonna work for me. The blood of Jesus worked for my grandparents. It worked for my parents. It's going to work for me. And guess what? It's not going to stop with me. It's going gonna, it's gonna to work with my kids. The word of God. The word of God worked for my grandparents and your grandparents and your parents and you. And it works for your kids too. This book cannot be an antiquated artifact that sits on your coffee table and collects dust. And the only time the dust is removed is when you have enough energy to clean the house. In this book, you find life. When's the last time that you read the word of God and allowed, allowed the pages of scripture to jump off? And you didn't fall asleep reading the word of God. I've fallen asleep reading the word of God before, so I ain't condemning you. But when's the last time that it jumped? The stories just came alive in your mind. Hide this word in your heart. So that when the enemy tells you that you're not enough, that you'll never make it, you can speak back, spiritually speaking, to the enemy. I'm the head, I'm not the tail. Nice try, Satan. This is the way that we fight. I'm an overcomer. I'm, I'm, I'm more than a conqueror. Greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. See, if you fight with the wrong weapons, don't bring a knife to a gunfight. A lot of times we try to spite, fight spiritual battles in our own strength and you have no chance of winning. You have to fight with the right things. The name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, and the word of the Lord still work. Man, what a powerful, powerful service. My prayer and my hope is that it changed your life. I know God was moving and he was speaking to you through it. Hey, on behalf of our pastoral team and our leadership team, we just want to thank you again for worshiping with us this morning at Christian Life Austin Online. We pray that this service remains in your heart and helps lead you to your next steps on your faith journey. And we want to take a moment right now to give you the opportunity to give your life to Jesus. If you've never made that decision before in your life, whether you're in your living room right now or you're traveling, I know that Jesus will meet you wherever you are. Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, 
you will be saved. You want salvation today? It is that simple. All you have to do is say with your tongue that Jesus Christ is Lord and also believe in your heart, truly believe that God raised him from the dead. Let's take a moment and let's pray together. I'm gonna pray a prayer and maybe you wanna pray a very similar prayer to what I'm gonna pray, but let's pray together right now. God, we love you and we thank you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for the gift of salvation given through Jesus. We believe that Jesus is Lord and we also believe that you, God, you raised Jesus from the dead. And God, we receive and we accept your salvation. We thank you for all you do for us. In your name we pray, amen and amen. Wow. Well, congratulations to everyone who made that decision. I'm so proud of you. And I want you to know that all of heaven is celebrating with you right now in this very moment. And we at Christian Life Austin are also celebrating with you as well. But hey, we know that this is only step one on the journey. We want you to know that you are not alone and we don't even expect for you to figure this whole thing out on your own. We wanna partner with you as we walk through our core values. Know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference in the lives of others. We would love to help you take your next step. Whether it's water baptism, joining a life group, or getting plugged in and serving through Growth Track, we have everything you need to make this process easy. And we wanna walk alongside you as you take your next step. We want you to know that you're valued here at Christian Life Austin, and you're valued in the kingdom of heaven. Hey, we wanna know what your next step is. And we wanna know if you made the decision to follow Jesus today. So please click the link in the description so we can get connected with you. Again, thank you so much for worshiping with us here today at Christian Life Austin. And we can't wait to see you soon.